Let's all do those youtube -y things. Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you'll be notified of any of my uploads. I read all the comments, so make sure you leave one down below for me and let me know what you think. I appreciate every one of you. And all the likes help me get my videos in the algorithm so others can see us. Yes, I'm still that small channel, but we're getting bigger each and every day. Hi friends, welcome back. We've got so much to cover when it has to do with the Montecito duo talking. Yes, Harry is doing those interviews by himself, but I can still hear the voice of Meghan Markle coming out at every turn. Now, to start off with, the CBS interview on 60 Minutes with Anderson Cooper has dropped trailers and out of the first trailer Anderson asked Harry is there any way that he would be considering going back to be a working royal family member well it took all of two seconds but he came back with a resounding no we all know there's only one way that he would ever come back as a working royal member is if he was actually able to take that choice that he said in Harry and Meghan docu-series with Netflix that he wanted half in and half out. Basically, he would do the work whenever they felt like it to get notoriety in the public eye and then use that notoriety to merch anything, sell themselves, make any type of money in the U.S. and around the world. It's like having your cake and eating it too. But we knew that was never going to happen, and he knows now that'll never happen. Another trailer asks about the fact that, okay, you've said you don't want to be a working family member, and that's fine. Why are you talking now? Why do you just constantly bring it up? And then he refers to the fact that because I tried to lead a private life, but all these stories keep popping up about his wife. Well, Harry, you are always going to be a public figure. Your wife is always going to be a public figure. Unfortunately for the two of you and unfortunately for most of us. But people are going to say things and that you do not like. And it's not necessarily anybody from the palace leaking. But this is a narrative that he's pushing. He explains to Anderson about how that the never complain, never explain does not really happen. That basically, because he's decided to step away, the family has decided to punish him by leaking stories to the media about his wife. So he explains that they will be speaking to a correspondent and basically spoon feed him a story and then they'll run with that. He has no proof. This doesn't happen. As far as I'm concerned, the only one that I have actually seen this happen is himself. Dan Wooten of GBN News has spoken about the fact that during the time frame before Mexit happened, where he claims that himself and his father were the only ones that had the email of the details of what was going to happen, he actually had the email. It had been sent the email about what was going to happen, but he didn't leak the story. And if Harry didn't give it to him, why would King Charles give it to him? At the time, Prince Charles. But in Harry's mind, he did. So that trailer ends with Harry basically schooling Anderson. And because... There's no pushback. Henderson's not going to ask him, can you prove it? What Harry will do to sell this book, I know, is basically a contract that he's fulfilling. He has to do so many talk shows. He has to do so many interviews, things like that. Whatever he has agreed to do, he is just doing this to cover his self for the advance on the book and what he's contractually obligated to do. But... His constant waning on about how the family is not going to help him get back with the family in any way. Now, on Sunday also, there's going to be an interview with 
ITV's Tom Bradbury. And on ITV1, his interview is basically doing the opposite of coming out the gate of blaming the family. Harry is coming out on this side, acting like a victim. Harry says the family has made them the villains, that they have no need or want to reconcile with them. Well, the issue with that part is because after multiple interviews now, the accepting of the racism award with the RFK Foundation, the Harry and Meghan docu-series, the Oprah interview, and then they feel the name after they've aired all of their dirty laundry that they are owed a apology. They have nothing, apparently, to be sorry for. They are all the victims of the royal family. And then they want to act like they're surprised that they're the villains in the piece? He goes on to say he wants a family, not an institution. Okay, that's fine. You have your wife, your children. Now go have your family. There's no institution at all. But you're not going to change the institution of the monarchy. As he knows, he is not new to this situation. He is a 38-year-old man who has grown up in the monarchy. He has seen firsthand his grandmother his mother, his father, all the family members that are in the monarchy. He knows the pattern of what everything happens. The only thing that has changed is the person that has come into his life, who has fed on his insecurities, who has told him how he has been treated so badly, and has told him that he should have been the heir and not the spare. There are so many complete suggestions that when they had their Australian tour, they were on this huge high. They thought they were going to be coming back. And because they were on such a huge high from all the great publicity that they were getting, granted, it was a big tour. They did well. People come out. That can give you a bigger sense of yourself than what it really is if you're open to it and Megan is an actress so when people show out for her as an actress it means you're doing really well and it's all about you but when crowds show up for royal family members yes they want to see the specific people who are there but in the end it is about showing up at the time for Queen Elizabeth now it will be for King Charles but at the time, they thought they were going to run this high right into the store and say, okay, now that you can see, we can turn it on and off and we can make the money for the royal family. That we're going to do what we want and this is what it is. They even say in the docuseries that they were going to go back after that tour and demand what they wanted and how they wanted to be going forth on the trips. Well, Queen Elizabeth, if nothing else, they should have known that was not going to happen. Queen Elizabeth was about the monarchy and the citizens and the Commonwealth. And she had devoted her entire life. She had watched her father and devote his entire life to it. And it was not going to change. So... Them going in with a demand of half in and half out was never going to work. But now, really, in a few weeks, it'll be three years since Queen Elizabeth came out with her statement saying that they're much loved family members, but they will be stepping away as working royals. And look where they are. They're still complaining about the fact that they didn't get what they wanted. Now, King Charles has been talked about a lot in the media. Some people say that he is weak. Some people say that they're going to walk all over him. But I don't think so. I think he is kind of like what we would say, he walks softly, but he carries a big stick. And 
especially with Prince William, who is a very strong man behind him and beside him to help him not fall for the Harry and Meghan show. Harry and Meghan demand an apology. Well, I don't think you're going to get it because by all rights, the family should be the ones getting apologized to. Now, Meghan and Harry, if you don't want to be part of the family, great. We'll miss you, they'll say. But we still are going to carry on in the mission of the monarchy, and we're not going to allow you to tear it down. Now, him saying he wants his brother and father back, no. If that was the case, you would not be doing what you're doing now. You would not be slamming the family at every aunt chance you get. People who have read the book have said he comes for Catherine, he comes for Camilla, and these two men, Charles and William, when you come for their women, they're not going to take it lightly. Last week we all congratulated Jason Knopf as he was named by King Charles as Lieutenant of the Royal Victorian Order. For his service to the monarchy. Yes, we all know Jason Knopf worked for both Harry and Meghan and Prince William at the time when they shared him as their outlets. He is also the one that brought the story of what the people who worked for Harry and Meghan were going through, the bullying story, to Prince William because he could not get any help by directly going to Harry or Meghan because they were the ones who were bullying the staff. The fact that people were leaving left and right didn't really seem to phase Harry or Meghan at all. So we got to know who Jason Knopf was through the book Revenge and Courtiers and through the courts because when they were suing the Daily Mail about the breach of the letter, Jason Knopf was obligated to give evidence about from Harry and Meghan emails of them talking about how they were going to be helping Omid write his book, Finding Freedom. And in the actual court case against the Daily Mail, they had said they had not helped in any way. And it was very specific in these emails that you see. He said, we have to be able to, to not let anyone know or be able to see that we have been helping in this book. So this was perjury on Megan's part because she was in front of a judge, even though it was not in live, you know, in England, she was on Zoom or phone call. She said she had nothing to do with this book. Because of these emails proving that she did, she had to go back and apologize to the court saying she had forgotten that she actually helped with the books. Well, in the docuseries, they make it out like we don't know why he felt the need to tell people that why would he say anything? Not the fact that they got caught in a lie, but why would he tell? Well, the court told him, what do you have? Show what you have. It was part of disclosure that the Daily Mail made him because he worked for them at the time when it happened. So this was disclosure in court. But of course, Omid is trying to say basically the only reason he got his RFO was kind of a wink and a nod to, hey, thanks for helping us bring down the duo. 